So I recently did a video with a guy that I got to know. He actually reached out to our company for property management and was looking to hire us as, you know, to help him lease and manage their properties. And turns out that he is actually managing property for his dad, but his dad still kind of wants to keep it in house and not quite ready to release those to a management company. Uh, my name is Sue Ritchie. I'm a principal broker here at Ritchie Property Management. We manage rental property for our owners in Northern Virginia, and I'm also an investor myself. And so I wanted to share this interview I did with Jonathan on kind of the challenges that they've had in terms of managing rental property on their own and some of the advice he'd give to other landlords who are looking at doing it on their own and some of the things that he's learned. So stay tuned. I think the other part of what I wanted to just talk with you about too is, you know, we, we touched on the, the, uh, the five properties that you're managing for your dad. So let's talk about that part a little bit, because that's sure. kind of what prompted the first call to me in the first place and how we right. got connected because it's, um, I think it was, I guess time is a key word there, right? Yeah. Time is um, one, one person managing five properties is, is a lot. Um, so talk about, tell me about like those properties and how kind of where those, how long have they been with you? What are you doing for there? You're kind of doing everything. Right. So I'm pretty much doing everything. And if they have an issue, um, if they don't tell me that, I don't know about it. So I'm pretty sure that they're asking, I mean, I had one, one tenant ask me about squirrels living in the fence. Um, there's nothing I can do about that because there's a little hole there. Uh, but we ended up, we did end up replacing the fence because it was old anyways. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing everything from, from showing the house to uh, getting it ready. Um, tenant screening, background checks, credit checks and everything. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, getting, uh, getting cleaners to come make sure the house is nice and clean for them. Yeah. And then uh, the maintenance. So, you know, if something breaks then they text me and then I got to go find a contractor to, to do it, which is, is okay sometimes, but like, you know, there's one emergency where the water was leaking every, they had to shut off the, the water for the entire house. Yeah. And it took me two days to find a, a plumber to go out there to get it. So that was kind of stressful. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the tenant turnover. So I'm, I'm pretty much doing anything from A to Z. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what we do, except we do it on a bigger scale and have some, you know, have steady people, people who can, we, we know exactly who to call when the water's off, they get there, you know, within, usually within hours and um, can deal with it. And that, but that's just, we do that all day and we do that for a number of clients. I mean, a couple of things you touched on, which I think are two key things that can, can be real problems with, not just for self man. I mean, you have a, you've been doing this, you have a, you know, a good system, but again, you're doing something else. You're doing mm -hmm. your regular job. You've got your, your family and this is not what you do all the time. Right. The two key things that can be real problems are tenant screening and mm -hmm. uh, leasing and marketing because that's that the vacancy can be a big, a big killer for, you know, cash flow and revenue and all of that. So um, how are you as a, you know, individual bird, how are you kind of marketing your properties and, and, and getting them filled quickly so you don't have so much turnover? Yeah. That's so, I mean, uh, so really right now what I'm doing is, uh, so I had one that was going vacant uh, in July. So I always ask uh, the current tenants a few months out, you know, what are your plans just so I can get ready. Uh, so I'm posting it on apartments.com because it was charging uh, 10 bucks a week now. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, well which believe is... me, we've had a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just came out of nowhere. So yeah. I started off with that. And then, you know, as, as it gets closer to crunch time, then I'm putting it on Zillow. And then I'm, so before, before COVID, I was scheduling, you know, viewings uh, in person. Uh, now it's a little bit different. It's a little more flexible. You know, I have video walkthroughs, which have been helpful, but it's just not the same because, yeah. you know, the tenant wants to be able to see the house, walk, get a feel for the layout and everything. Um, so for those that actually want to see the house, uh, I've been scheduling, um, I've been scheduling showings, which is, is cool, but sometimes they don't show up. Yeah. Uh, no, no call, no text. That, that's been kind of annoying. Yeah. Um, 
So those are <laughs> getting the troubles with, with it uh, is showing a me when you're one person and you've got to run out and, you know, whether you're, it's one here, when they're trying to schedule them, you know, in a group or like kind mm -hmm. of at the same time is efficient, but that doesn't always work for everybody. And so that's, that's a big time suck. I know. And oh yeah. I think, yeah. I think that's, you know, again, not to toot our own horn, but I think that's where a, a realtors management companies can really help. Even if you do the management yourself, if, just from our ability to just kind of push it out there to so many websites, you know, websites and mm -hmm. having a lockbox, having other realtors be able to show the properties or our own, our own agents be able to show it. That's just getting more people in the door. And it's just a numbers game from there, you know, just being able to get that right person and do that process, you know, the application quickly and get it turned over. That'll save you a tremendous amount of time in the showing part, but also hopefully reduce any vacancy, you know, so oh, yeah, absolutely. You, several months. Yeah. That's just money that's lost. Even if you pay a commission to an agent, you know? Right. Exactly. There, I mean, I don't know how many good tenants I've lost just because I couldn't get the schedule, the schedule yeah. uh, to match up with theirs. So, yeah. Well, so that's okay. So that's one part that I think is, a, is where someone can save, you know, somebody some time managing the other part that is also critical is the tenant screening. So tell me what you're doing about that and how are you screening potential applicants? Yeah. So basically what I'm doing is just, I send them a link through CozyCo and then I'm looking at uh, the background check. I just look at the background to see, make sure there's no felonies or anything. And then through credit checks, just making sure the credit is okay. Uh, I'm also checking like W2s, uh, pay stubs, bank accounts, I'm also looking at uh, looking for references, mm -hmm. as well as uh, pictures of of current current living spaces. You know, just to make sure that it's uh, it's at least decent. Yeah. Well, so you're doing you're doing a you know a decent amount of background. We the criminal mm -hmm. part you touched. There's a there's a whole other video I can do. And actually, I think Craig might have done a video on the criminal part about what you can and can't use, and not to we won't even get into all of that because it's it's actually fairly complicated and and very um, it, it's, it's almost, it is very complicated, even for those of us in the industry about what, what is you're allowed to use, because there, were, there are a lot of rules about time frame type of thing. So anyway, that just as an FYI, that I will, um, I will reference another one of the videos we did about that just to complicate it further and just let people know, basically, there's not really a lot of clear information about it. But okay. anyway, you're doing and just in terms of all the other things you mentioned a lot more than most people who manage their own. A lot of people will just kind of run a quick background check, credit check. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks good. And then move somebody in and it's not enough. I mean, this is your, it's a big asset. It's, it's important to do all that. So it's good yeah. that you're doing, you're doing, you know, kind of more than the average we do all of that and then you know just like we put together we have this whole formula and algorithm kind of and score the the applicants consistently across everybody and then make a rec recommendation and we have been very fortunate not to have to have evicted anybody we've approved actually take it back one person um in let's see 16 years uh that we've had to evict wow even through COVID, even through all of it, because that's just something we are really proud of. And, and it saves so much time for us and does, you know, for the owners and we just, we have good tenants and we have good people who run. And um, I think that's just doing that is, is so important. We'll save you a lot. Oh yeah. You know? I've had uh, the first tenant I put in, I mean, it was just absolutely terrible. So yeah, having a good tenant is definitely yeah. ideal. Yeah. So for you, just like, just, you know, and kind of summing up your experience in, in managing properties on your own, what would you say is your biggest challenge? Um, just in anything like for, for uh, what's been the biggest challenge in managing your rental properties? I would say definitely getting new tenants uh, because you have to, I mean, you have to get repairs done. You have to make sure it's clean. And then you have people walking in and out of the house uh, messing it up again. So you got to make sure it's clean again before uh, they move in. Um, coordinating times to meet with them, to, to change keys, get all the forms filled out. Like I hate paperwork. Yeah. Um, I actually hate paperwork. So yeah. that's definitely been uh, yeah. pretty, pretty annoying to deal with. 
Um, it's funny so that you say that because we recently took over some properties from another, um, you know, another investor who has, you know, a number of them. And that was the, the main thing that they said, because there were a lot of things that were sort of not done and paperwork is, you know, it's a pain, but it's important because it's, it documents things you have, mm -hmm. you know, the people signing things in writing and whatever it is, but it's super important, but it is, it is very time consuming, but yeah. <laughs> necessary, you know? So, yeah. yeah, well, well, good. I, um, you know, I, we're always here to help you because we're in your backyard, but it's, you know, these are just, I wanted to just talk with you about, um, about that because I know you've been doing it. I know it's been, it's been a bit of a challenge, you know, and at times and it's coming on a busier time of season seasonally now. So yeah. we're all going to be super busy, but. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm really looking forward to, cause I really want to buy in this area. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to manage them. Yeah. So th that is the goal because it's nice to kind of uh, uh, invest out of more out of state, but if you can invest in your own backyard, it's nice because you know everything, you know the area. Exactly. You, know. you can go buy it and you can see stuff. And yeah, I think yeah, there will exactly. be a time. I think there is a time coming uh, along where it's not going to be like this. I think our markets is going to change. You know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of markets that are like us right now. They're just like crazy and no inventory and. Right. Um, you know, but I think uh, some of this money, I've talked about this in a different video recently, that some of the uh, the mortgage forbearance, all of that, that's all going to end at some point. Yeah. And the system yeah. is going to end. And so, so there is going to be um, effects of that, you know, in time. I, you know, I, you don't want to capitalize on like people's hardships and you, you know, but it happened. It happened before. It's going to happen again. It's just a question yeah. of, now, and that's not the only thing. It's just there will be other opportunities for other reasons. But yeah, I know a lot of people that are just they're just waiting for everything to kind of just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's like well, somebody asked me today. I was at the, um, I was out. Somebody said, "When do you think this bubble is going to burst?" You know, if I knew that mm -hmm. exactly, that would be I would be um, on a beach somewhere. <laughs> yep, but uh, you know it. We've seen it. I mean, when it when that first that downturn in the 2000 happened, it was almost like overnight because we we had just personally just purchased a rental property that we were going to flip. We bought it mm. because we were we knew there's like some changes and we knew, well, if we have to keep it, we still have it. It's actually turned right. out to be a good investment. We still have held on to it. And there's been a lot of development around it. It was kind of in the Dunmore area, but it's oh, wow. and so it's, it worked out OK. Yeah, but it literally like over you know it felt like almost overnight that 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 changed so i don't know we'll see but i i think there's some changes coming so, yeah absolutely yeah. anyway well thanks for um getting on here with me and i appreciate your insight into the management and also into uh, kind of investing and we'll, we'll oh, yeah. keep in touch yeah thanks for having me it's, it's yeah. fun yeah well good well thanks and uh and, you know reach out anytime we'll share absolutely. share our experiences some more Absolutely. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, you. Take care. Have a good afternoon. You too. You Bye. Too. Bye. So I hope some of that information we talked about helped you. There's definitely a lot you can do as an individual landlord, but there is also a lot that to think about and perhaps get the help of a realtor either for leasing or the help of a property management company for getting your place leased and also maybe providing help ongoing. It really just depends on your time, how much time you want to spend. And sometimes you think you're saving a lot of money by doing it yourself when in fact you're actually spending more money because you're not, you're wasting time letting the property sit vacant, not really getting and maximizing your rent and keeping your property occupied. So sometimes even though you spend a little money, you can make a little more. So that's just a personal decision, but hopefully some of the things we talked about were able, were, you know, uh, helpful to you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.